they were sacrificing me. So, um, you were so as they're praying for me, it's like every time they would shake the bottle, a different spirit would hit me. Before I could say anything, this man picked me up and slammed me on the floor. And I'm like, mommy, help me. After Fred was vile, saw you get slammed down by that guy. That was his, that's enough point. Mm -hmm. Because the demon blurted out and exposed that the oil that they were not only using on people, but selling, they get it from the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And it's like from the bodies of dead people. Mm -hmm. So when he saw you get slammed down, he moved the guy off the way, grabbed you. Mm -hmm. And that's when he said, we are going to that church now. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you guys got there, the first thing you blurted out was what? Mommy. And then I was holding my hand out like mommy, you know, like, you know how a child like, and I'm skipping with well, the demon skipping around the church. It was like very childlike. It was, it was very childlike at this point. At the same time, the pastor, he's behind the pulpit, behind the pulpit. Like he ran back there. Mm -hmm. Soon as the door opened, he runs back there and he views his wife right there by herself. It blurted out. The bottle, the bottle that's behind the um, the pulpit. The pulpit is another bottle behind the pulpit. I don't remember who got the bottle, but I remember just skipping, skipping, around, skipping the around the church. Somebody called the cops. Her husband that ran back there, he was calling the cops. So as this all going on, first on and um, the first lady is going back and forth, and it was like we went to a church, uh, a gin, and the oils that you sell. He, they touch everybody with it, but it hit me in particular. Mm -hmm. It hit me. And she was just so angry to see her face. She was so angry. It was like this anger, like, if you ruin this for us. Yeah. Like, it no, wasn't even shame. Just, just, it wasn't even like guilt. Yeah. It was just anger. Like, if you ruin this for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because one thing about Jesus is that the Bible says he made himself of no reputation. And these people live off of the glory, especially when they're doing works of the devil. The devil, what was he after? God's glory. So mm -hmm. these people are of the same kind. Mm. Jesus was saying, you are of your father, the devil. You don't know my father. If you, mm -hmm. if you knew him, mm -hmm. you would know me. Mm -hmm. Being in similar situations mm -hmm. and knowing how the last thing these people want is their reputation to be ruined. Mm -hmm. So when the cops got there, I remember you told me, that one particular cop came to you and what did he tell you he said i need you to leave the premises or you will be arrested because i'm trespassing on the church property so you're talking to a whole demon so it sat down on the floor it sat down on the floor so when the police officer arrests me what was going through your mind at that moment i'm numb he put me in the cop car. I have handcuffs and I'm in the cop car. I lay. He put me down. I lay on the um, the back seat. I couldn't even move my body. I can hear everything going on. It was like commotion. They told everybody to get out because they were trespassing. Mm -hmm. So mommy feels like they was all outside. So the Haitian police come. I hear everything. The Haitian police come and mommy and Fezva is talking to the Haitian police officer. Like, yeah, I'm not with the police. I'm saying it's the same thing. I've been marching for a long time. I've been with the police. I've been with the police. But it's a bad spirit. I've been with the police. Because the police said, no. I'm not going to do anything for me. I'm going to leave the church. I'm going to leave the church. Because I'm going to leave the church. Because I'm going to leave the church. So I remember you mentioned that the police came to you. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the Haitian one. He was the regular, I believe, a Caucasian people. guy. He was a Caucasian police officer. And then he had a flashlight to your eye. You know, he was expecting you. And what did he say to you? He said, um, where are you going? No demon is going to bother you. He said, where are you going? No demon is going to bother you? No demon is going to get you. No demon is going to bother you. That's what he said. So where were you going? So they took me to a uh, mental institute. They called it in because they already had a doctor ready for me. To the point this doctor had a shot. And they're talking to me and I'm just numb, mm -hmm. numb. And they're like, she may, she's might be on something. They think I'm on something. Because yeah. I'm not talking. I'm not, they said, what's your name? I'm not saying nothing. I could not speak. I was in a 
I, I was in a mental numb state mm -hmm. that I don't know if when the demon left they le left me in that state. Yeah. She um, shot me with the shot, mm -hmm. and I remember as I'm walking, there was the the doctor was like, "Hold her, because she could she can go any minute now. She can go any minute." I'm walking. I see these two big dudes with like white on that the, the workers and they were like he opened the door put her in this bed because she's gonna go hold her all i remember laying in that bed and i can't tell you nothing after that and i don't even remember hitting my head in the pillow i just i just was out i remember waking up in the afternoon um they came in the afternoon and my mom they was praying for me i couldn't do anything so pray about pray prayed for me and it cast out whatever that was it that was yeah. in me and then my mom took me a bath in there because I had a, a room with a bathroom and mm -hmm. took me a bath, took me a shower, got me clothes and everything like that. So I was able to speak. I was able to speak and 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 then first by the name of Jesus, I was able to speak in the name of Jesus, I was able to do all that. So he was telling you to put your hands up. Put pray, my hands up and, and pray. Say in the name of because Jesus. Because I couldn't speak. Yeah. And then um, the doctor came in and there was like, do any of your family speak Spanish? Or do any of your family speak any languages? My mom's like, no, she only know Creole, no, and barely that, barely, yeah. barely that, yeah. English and Creole. And the, and the doctor's like, no, she was speaking Spanish. She was speaking other languages, well, fluent, was, fluently. Yeah. But how long were you at the mental institution? What happened? How did you get out? My question is. So, um, when when they came, they left. Mommy and Fazva left because they were like visiting time was over. Yeah. Um, and then they asked me to come have dinner with everybody and I was like no I want to eat in my room like I I, I want to eat in my room and they was like no you ate your room the other day I probably was in there for three days mm -hmm. I sit there and I'm like I'm not crazy why am I here like I'm and I'm eating the food fast because I, I want to get out of there when everybody in the room is something wrong with them and you're the only one that's nothing's wrong with you and you're sitting there looking like oh god like but why why am I here yeah and then, um, um, take your time. It's okay. And then, um, sorry, sister. It's okay. And then I, I got the phone. I called mommy. I called mommy. I said, mommy, why have you forsaken me? I don't know. Then it came out my mouth. It just came out my mouth. I said, mommy, why you have And she said, oh, Joanna. Like that broke her. You her could hear her, the broken in her, her heart. Yeah. And she, she was broken. But that's the only thing I could say. And I kept saying it. That's the only thing I could say. After I said that, I want to say, I didn't even, it was not even 10 minutes, mommy came. So then mommy comes in and um, gives me food and everything like that. And then she was like, I'm taking my child out. I'm taking my child out. They did a investigation at my school. So around when you mm -hmm. were in the mental institution, they wanted to find out like, mm -hmm. What is going on? Right. Like, check your school records. They, they probably were calling people, mm -hmm. you know, seeing if you had any issues with drugs. Mm -hmm. And they found nothing. They found nothing. My, They went to my teachers. They said, she's a good student. Yeah. She, no problems. No. Straight A students. My mm -hmm. GPA was high. I had no issues. Mm -hmm. After they had done their investigation, then the, the doctor was like, okay, so we'll let her go. But just letting you know, she's going to get worse. She's going to get worse. This is the doctor said, my mom said, in the name of Jesus... She said, in the name of Jesus, my child's not going to get worse. Mm. That's not going to happen to my child. And the doctor's like, well, here are the numbers, um, doctors and everything like that, that you can call right away if she gets worse. She did not receive what the doctor was saying. Mm. Not one time. I can remember just gathering my stuff. And then Fezval, he met us outside of the uh, mental institute. Mm. And... He basically told my mom that she's not going back to the house. I can't go back to the house. Whatever is attacking mm -hmm. you, it's coming from, it's something that's in the house that's causing you to get hit mm -hmm. each and every time. I do get delivered. I go back. It's, this, it's the same. Yeah. It's the same. So after all that, Fezval um, takes me to the car. We go to his house with Seata. Mm -hmm. So I stayed with Fezval and Seata for two weeks. Mind you, um, now I had to go back to school. Yeah. I miss so many days. I miss because I played. I was I was a goalie and I was the captain. And you miss your whole soccer. I miss season. my whole soccer season. Mm -hmm. My whole soccer season. Go to night school, come back, and just try to try to catch up. Just to catch up because mm -hmm. I was in my senior year. Yeah. First of all, I would let me sleep with his army clothes. Yeah. 
I have to explain what Ahmed clothes is. When something's Ahmed, it means something is anointed. Just to also pro provide clarification, Farwa's Vaad wasn't the only one in the house. Mm -hmm. There was a sister that was on the house called Siata. So it was the both of them. They both stayed at the house. I have my own room and then they will, um, and Siata will cook for me and she was always there for me, watching over me. Mm -hmm. I remember one instant, Fezvai took me on a ride. We were going to go see my mom. We're passing by their church, the, the first lady in the pastor's church. I started to hyperventilate and I started to, I started to hyperventilate and I'm just like, like, and Fezvai was like, stop my katsa at Joanna. And I just sucked that in. And then the next day, he did the same thing. He drove me past them. Just to see if you would get a reaction. Then he kept he, he he kept doing that. The next day, the next day, to when he did that because I was there for two weeks. And when he did that for a week straight, my reaction was just nothing. Yeah. I saw them outside because they didn't know for it's our car, so they saw them outside and nothing. Mm -hmm. Didn't get reaction, nothing. Mm -hmm. I feel like it strengthened me, but it. it I didn't, it, it hindered me for showing my emotion. So you were staying at this at the house. Did anything ever happen at the house? Yes. One particular incident, uh, say I was there, Fred's I was there. I don't know what was I was doing. I just passed out. And then here's Fred's vibe and say I come come in, running in. They're praying for me. Fred's vibe is praying for me, and I'm knocking down all their vases and everything because I'm falling back. Mm -hmm. And then he's praying for me, and he's saying, "Why?" He said in Creole. Uvino Kai Sa, this anointing house, move spree sorti, like commanding out. And I don't know why it hit me. I think I was in a state of um, sorrow, mm. maybe. Yeah. And that's the doors for the enemy too, because yeah. I was, my mom was not there. I was not with my sisters. I was in, you know, first of all, I wasn't a stranger, but he still wasn't like my 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 sisters, yeah. my mom. I think I was in a state of sorrow, like, like self pity. Yes, and that's when the end. That's when that. That was the door for the, the enemy. enemy. Yeah. He cast that out. Seata came, put water on me. She banned me, whatever. She banned me, and then I was okay. Yeah. When you realize you being in that demeanor kind of caused the door to open, mm -hmm. did that change your demeanor? Did you put on strength after that? Yes. After I realized having that pity, 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 that's what the enemy wants you to stay, mm -hmm. that way he could continue to attack you. I started, you know, just to pray more mm -hmm. and to ask God to show me, show me, show me. And I remember one instant, um, cause I slept in the other room mm -hmm. and it was a window right by the room. It was a window right here. The bed is right here. I remember sleeping. So every time I sleep, I will always cover my head. I'm yeah. just always cover my head. One instant, I just remember, um, I was in and out of sleep. Cause I remember waking up, looking at the window and I hear it. I, mean, I hear that in the window. Mm -hmm. I hear it like. So I'm like, so I, I look and I'm like, I hear it and I'm looking at the window and I cover my head back and I hear it again and I cover my head back to see. And mind you, I'm in, it, uh, I, I can't see what state I am. I mean, like, I feel like I was in the spiritual room. I, I can't, I was in and out. And finally, when the second I heard, chick -chick -chick -chick, I covered my head and went and went back and went to sleep. Like you were in a deep sleep. I was in a deep sleep. I remember I had in my dream, I remember, but it wasn't a dream. No. It was like, you know how Paul said, I don't know whether I'm in the body or out the body. Correct. I don't, but you was caught up somewhere. I was caught up somewhere. Mm -hmm. I remember having Felsvaz Ahmed clothes on mm -hmm. and I see a Lame ocean. I'm walking, I'm not walking on the ocean, but I'm like splashing my feet on the ocean. Water, my feet is barefoot and I'm just like walking. And I see ahead of me, I see it was like a, a house mm -hmm. and it was like a beach. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking towards the house. I go, I go into the house and what I see, I see the first lady, the pastor and a witch. Mm -hmm. And then she's have this big old, it was like this big old cauldron, cauldron, cauldron. cauldron. Mm -hmm. there's this big old cauldron and I'm like, and then they don't see me and she's shaking it. She's shaking it. She's shaking it. The thing that you heard go. Yeah. Chuk, chuk, chuk. I see. I hear. I see what she's. I see what I saw in the window. She's shaking it. They don't see me. And I look, 
and they're talking. Could you understand what they were saying or not really? Not really. Mm -hmm. It was like, I feel like they were speaking Creole that like I couldn't really uh, make out, mm -hmm. but I knew she was calling something. She was calling something, kept calling. She was kept calling something. And I was able to see them and they couldn't see me. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at them and they couldn't see me. And then after that, I woke up. And what was crazy around that time, Fred Wozlaw came to your room and looked for you. Could not find and you. And he could not see you. He could not see He you. could not find you. He could not find you. He looked, he, he went around the house looking for you mm -hmm. and he could not find you. Yes. He left. He left to go to my mom's house. Yeah. At that same time, I, I really, I finished half the dream. I got up, took a shower. I realized I was home by myself. Mm -hmm. I, there, I'm never home by myself. As I was Atta or Fred Wozlaw there. Never home by I'm yourself. never home by myself. So I go take a shower. And I'm in the bed. I, I just like finished taking a shower, got dressed. I'm just in the bed. And I call, I pick up the phone and call mommy. Because mm -hmm. I always call mommy in the morning. Mommy always call me or whatever. So I call mommy and I said, and I'm talking to mommy. I said, mommy, I had this dream. And I'm telling her my dream. As I'm talking to mommy, for as I pulled up, for as I don't go in the house, he's still in, he's, he's in the gate. Mm -hmm. He's in the gate. And mommy, and then mommy opened the door. She's on the phone with me. Mommy explaining how her how she was. Mm -hmm. Passé, Joanna, passé, Joanna first val, the téléphone pour tande qui dream Joanna fait. Mommy, give me the phone um, to first val. I'm telling first val I'm, I'm in the house. He's like, he's just quiet. He was probably in shock. He was quiet. Yeah. I hear, oh my God, Joanna, oh my God. I hear Atta running in. <clears throat> She's screaming, screaming, a grown woman screaming. She fell to the ground when she saw me. She, her, she fell to the ground and you know, her back is against the wall. She falls down crying, ventilating, like crying. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm like, Atta, what's wrong? They didn't tell me yet that, that they didn't tell. That they thought they lost you. They, did, they lost mm -hmm. me until Atta was like, I thought I lost you. You're a virgin. They were gonna get you. They was gonna kill you. And then she was keep going on and on. I said, Atta, I'm right here. I didn't go nowhere. What happened? She was like, Frizz I said, Frizz I said they couldn't find you. Frizz I said you was not in the house. That like, he looked everywhere. You was not in the house. He looked everywhere. And then she, she said, I just ran out of work. She ran out of work. And then she sees her ventil. I said, Atta, I'm right here. I gotta Atta, I'm here. I'm here, Atta. Like I I turned her to touch me. I'm, I'm okay. here. She, I'm okay. She's like crying, crying, crying. And my mom's still on the phone. But my mom's here. All that. I started screaming like she was like literally in tears crying. I said, I I'm right here. I'm right here. I said, nothing's wrong with me. I'm right here. I said, Phil's about I told Phil as I was, you when you sleep, you put um you sleep with the um the covers over your head. He was like, no, he couldn't find me, he couldn't find me. I to waited for Phil's about to come because she had to go back to work because she she didn't tell nobody she didn't clock out she went straight to the house running in the house to find me and then first I came first I still very first is a very stoic stoic man not that he's emotionless his expression is yeah. not always outward no it's not I can see his concern it concern his eyes mm -hmm. it, it was not enough to make me afraid yeah it was not enough to make he me wouldn't afraid. do that no so when we got into the car he said, it's speak of the dream. I speak in the dream. So he said, tell me the dream tell again. Tell me the dream again. Mind you, I'm saying stuff that a 70 year old would not know. I was not born in Haiti. I would not know. How I, how would I know this? So he's telling me, speak the dream. I said, I heard in the window. I'm in and out of this state. I can't explain. I hear chuk, 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 chuk in the window. The, yeah. yeah. And I'm hearing that. <laughs> And then come to find a mama told me, said, they're, they're calling my spirit out. But the blood of Jesus was always wrapped on me. I had this robe on and I knew I was safe because they could not see me. Even though they called my spirit out, they could not see me. I walked around them, heard everything they were saying, and they could not see me. So I know for a fact I was there in real time.
<laughs> I was there in real time. And Frails Val, I was telling Frails Val this. He's stone face. Then he was like, he called another set, another um sister. She used to she used to do his service too with um when we used to go to the gym. She used yeah. to do the service. She was actually the one used to, to train us. She was to train us. He's like, I need you to tell her the dream. My, I tell her the dream. All I hear is, boy, boy, shizzy, shizzy. That's all she's saying on the phone. But I didn't understand what I saw was, it was not a dream. It was real. real. Mm -hmm. It was real time. It was real time. This is how we know it's real time. That night we go to Jen. We go to the prophet that called out the first prophecy of um, having the mental in um the mental um, spirit that was going to be thrown on me. So we go to his gen. He don't know what's going on. So when the gen started to go on every, at everything. And as he's um, saying their name. He's prophesied in my dream. Well. What, hap what happened in real life. is not, It wasn't a dream. He was prophesied what was happening. He said. God They have a cauldry. They have a witch doctor. Doing all this to, to bring her out, to take her out, to take her spirit. So he's prophesying that. I don't know what happened. I uh, ran to the to go outside in the street, and um, the woman's daughter caught me. She grabbed my dress. Poof, she caught me right in time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Like the way the guy, as he was describing the location, he was saying that it's not an easy place to get to. Mm -mm. No. Like not even cars really get to there. Mm -mm. And that's Bagay where machine. they live and in not, Haiti. Yeah, and so that's where that witch doctor is located. Located. Yeah. So after after that, first of all, my mom had like a serious conversation. I couldn't stay in that state that we lived anymore. I have to relocate to a different state because they said this spirit and the man prophesied is a spirit of a woman that's by the door. That's that's by the door. And the gate keeps looking for me everywhere because that's everywhere. what they everywhere. So that's why they was able to go to first of house. When I was in that state of, you know, loneliness and just like sorrow, it's because they've been looking for me everywhere. So first of all, I was like, sat down with my mom and um, like, we need to get her out of this state. So that's when um, I had to move. So you did not end up finishing your senior year. You had to go to another school. And to finish my senior year. And everything. I came there like later on. Like later in the, sc later in the school, school year. year, like close to prom season. Yeah. That's when I got to um, the other state. But and were you able to graduate and everything? I was able to graduate the grace of God. Yeah. The levels from one school to the next, I was I, I had a higher level in, in this state. So when I went to other state, they were just like, okay, her levels were high. So she's just going to graduate. Yeah. We just give God the glory. Give him the glory and the honor. That you're still here. Yeah. You know, what the enemy tried to do, it would not work. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like Thank this you, is Jesus. important, you know, to have strong people, strong community Absolutely. and always choose God. Always choose because God. Because God is for you. He will never leave or forsake you. Demons had to flee at the name of Jesus. Absolutely. And this is something that people had to keep trying, trying, trying over to try to take you out. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that dawned on me as you were telling your story, they tried to come at you early. When early. you were at, when you were learning, when you were discerning, mm -hmm. You know, they they already knew you were going to be a threat. God was revealing who you are in his kingdom. But unfortunately, at that moment, we were not around safe people. Mm -hmm. But I thank God that we still had a community absolutely of yes. people that were really praying, really seeking yes. that we have a mother that a we had mother. a mother that really prayed and never gave up. When my mom said she said it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. When those people, especially mm -hmm. the guy who was leaving the church mm -hmm. and said she would not recover. She would not recover. M Mommy refuted everyone. Yes. But I see. Her fate did not come into agreement. Mommy's fate did not was not weak. That I feel like God gave her that burden because he, he knew that she could carry it. 
and he will help her carry it. When she saw everything was going on, she said, my God has my daughter. Yes. My God has my daughter. Jesus Christ has my daughter. He didn't take me halfway to leave me there. Mm -hmm. He's going to take me all the way. And that's what he did. Some people do not come back from this. Because this happened to another young girl in the church that we didn't know. Yes. Her outcome. We don't know her outcome. We just heard that she she did not recover. And I, I, I can't tell you why I'm here or why I could recover and why she didn't. I just say, thank you God for your mercy with my life. Thank you for your mercy because we were new Christians. We didn't know what was out here. We didn't know that people could do mixture. They could mix, they could mix church with Wait. serving the mm -hmm. devil mm -hmm. and this is what is out here now thank you for having the boldness to share because even when we hear the testimony of jesus christ some people still believe that he's dead mm -hmm. that we serve a dead god because of the lies because mm -hmm. of the deception of the enemy, of the enemy mm -hmm. that make that make people believe even different religions believe that RG we serve a God that never rose from the grave mm. but we know we know yes we know that our God through his death burial resurrection and ascension we have the victory amen. amen and you have to know who you are get into your book don't let nobody tell you who your God he tells you in the book the amen. book the Bible amen. people are coming and they're doing false they're seeing false narrative in the book that God created Read your Bibles. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody tell you about God. He tells you for himself who he is. It took 21 years to get my testimony out. Um, God was preparing me for this moment. I know it's the healing and the deliverance that I need for my family. It's not only for me, it's for somebody out there. You have a voice. Call on the name of the Father, our sovereign Lord, Jesus Christ. Call on the name of him. Lord. So Joanna, yes, Mom, thank you so much for taking the time to interview. Like. I just knew I couldn't tell my story without my sisters because knowing that this is what happened in my family mm -hmm. and for me to go through something so similar, so similar, you know, it just, it, it just shows God was faithful then and so he is faithful, faithful now. Then. So we just thank God. We give him the glory. We'll give him the glory. You know, what the enemy meant for bad, it turned around and worked out for your good because our, our faith was strengthened more than ever. Absolutely. I just know that this is only the beginning. And I do feel like, um, you know, there's people out there who are going through similar situations and they feel like they don't have nobody to turn to. God is for you. Like my sister said, speak to him. He'll come, he'll answer. So again, I just want to thank you guys. And again, like I said, I felt like I couldn't share my testimony without sharing my sister because what I went through was so similar. And, you know, one day I'll get there, but just for tonight, I just want to say God bless you all. And I'll see you on my next video. Bye now. God bless you. Bye. God bless you.